Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a short video tonight, just showing you how to fix quite a common issue with these B7A4s. Um, basically the coolant warning lights on the dash, but the level's actually okay. Uh, it's quite a common issue. I'll just run you through the warning light that's on and how to fix it. Uh, I've got quite a few videos on these B7s. If you want to check the link above for the playlist, or just check the description below. Um, there's plenty of other videos, cam belt on there, rear springs, a few others you might want to check out. Um, but just show you the warning light quick. So just say we've got coolant flashing there, the uh, temperature warning on it. And basically that's saying that the level's low. Um, the, the bottle's a little bit murky. If you find your bottle's a bit murky, the best way of sort of checking the level, if you can't see it, just use a torch. Generally just... Uh, makes it a little bit easier to see, but you can just see the level is sort of just above this line there. So it's well within the min and the max. So that light shouldn't come on until it drops below the minimum. So, uh, but it's quite a common issue on these. Basically the sensor is actually built into the bottle. And um, what happens is the coolant seeps through into the connector, shorts it out and then gives a faulty signal. So um, we've got a new bottle. I'll just run you through. If you check out the links in the description below, I've got some links to a bottle, the part number, and where you can get them from. Um, but you can just see on the bottom of the bottle, there's the sensor, little two pin connector, and it's all just part of the actual bottle. So, all we're going to do now is just swap this over. I'll just run you through swapping it over. Um, it's quite a straightforward job. All I'm going to do is just before I undo it, we've got to undo this little Phillips screw there. You just want a Phillips screwdriver, that's all. Um, but we're just going to pinch these, these sort of pinch style clips up there and just slide them off while the bottle's attached. It just makes it a bit easier. We've got the top one there and the bottom one there. That's all we need to undo. Just going to pull them down and just crack off the pipes a little bit. They tend to get a bit tight. So, so it's just a bit easier now while the bottle's fixed to crack them off. So we'll undo them, undo that. And then the bottle kind of tilts up and pulls out. So... Obviously, once we've got it up, we're just going to be careful to keep it upright to not lose any coolant out of the bottle. We can get rid of that and we'll get everything swapped over. And I'm just running through that now. So now I've got the bottle up. I did just put a bowl in the pipe there just to stop any coolant running through. Just stops making so much of a mess. Uh, once you've done that, you've got the connector on the bottom here. Standard sort of Volkswagen style connector. You can either put a flat bladed screwdriver sort of into there and just pry down on this back bit. But most of the, sometimes if it's a good clean connector, they're not too bad to get off your hands. Basically you can pull that and you'll hear a little click. And then once it's sort of clicked, you can pull it back. So. Once you've got your connector off, always just check your pins just to make sure they're not so corroded in there. Don't look too bad there. No, they don't actually look too bad in this one. Most of the time they do actually leak water through and rot them out, but it looks like it might actually just be a faulty sensor on this one. So all we'll do now is just get the bottle up, sort of try and hold this pipe upright, and then we'll just swap the bottle over and then run you through bleeding the system up. So I'm just going to dispose of the old antifreeze, um, but there's no reason really why you couldn't just swap that over. And I've got some fresh antifreeze to pop in the new one tonight. We've got the new one there. Obviously, we've got to swap the cap over. Um, I'm just going to locate it back in. Just put the connector in first and just guide it in. You've just got to make sure to get make sure you've got it in both holes. If you haven't got it in, it won't line up with the screw hole there, so you can't really get it too wrong.
Yeah, so just filled it up with some fresh antifreeze, just set it to the max level there. And I'm just going to run you through bleeding the system up. Uh, once I've bled it, I always like to just run these up to temperature, just make sure that uh, it gets up to temperature the fan cuts in. Uh, but basically to bleed them up, all we need to do is this little, uh, you might find some of these have a cover across the top here. This one, this model doesn't actually come with it, so if it's got the cover, obviously you just got to remove the cover quick. Um, but basically this top hose into the heater matrix, you can just see there's a little hole there. And all you need to do is just remove this pinch style clip, just pull it back. We're going to run it up, leave the engine running. And all you need to do is just simply pull this pipe back. Just, you know, don't have to go all the way back, just a certain, I think it's about half an inch, maybe a bit more. Um, but basically once it gets to the point where the coolant runs out of this, this little hole there, to start with, obviously you're bleeding it up so you will have some air in there. And all you're looking to do is just let the air come out, you'll hear it hissing. And as soon as it stops coming out with air and a few little bubbles out to start with, then you'll just push the pipe back on and put the clip on. And that's basically, it's at the highest point, so it's bled it up there. Once you've done that, you just obviously set your level again, make sure it's right, put your cap back on, just run it up to temperature. Um, all I like to do as well, is just in the morning when everything's gone cold, just check your, temp check your level again and just make sure it's set on the max. So we'll just crack that off and bleed it up quick now. Yeah, so we've got that cracked off now. It did just take quite a bit of working. Sometimes you can find coolant pipes get on really tight. So um, we've just got a pair of these sort of soft grip pliers, especially for water pipes. It just means that you can grab them. they have got some soft jaws on them so they don't damage them. You tend to find if you use something like that, they can eat into the pipe, especially if you're working it quite a bit and damage the pipe. So but now that we've done that, basically all I'm going to do is just pull it back. Sort of about that point there. Just take a little while for the coolant, coolant to sort of push around. I think we'll strike it up while we do it. Well, it is coming through. You might just find your sort of coolant level just rises a little bit in here and just plays about. You might see a little bit of air bubble out there at the same time. So. Right, so that's the cooling system all bled up now. As you can see, quite a straightforward job. Uh, it didn't take too long to come out there. Sometimes it does help just to have the bottle a little bit higher or just keep it top right up to the top. It just helps it, because uh, it's sort of quite a similar level. It just takes quite a bit to pull it through. So uh, Some cars, if that is really tight to get off and you're struggling, you can just bleed it up by just leaving the cap off and you'll get most of the air out that way. So, uh, But as you can see, quite a straightforward job. All I'm going to do, do now is just run it fully up to temperature. Just keep an eye on it, just check my pipes, make sure they're not leaking when I've had them off or anything like that. And then I'll just check the level when it's cold in the morning. So I hope the video helped. If it did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And uh, don't forget to check out any of the other videos.